What is going on guys? Welcome back commentary for you. Before I start the franchise mode, I want to let you know gridironhelmets.com has every access football mini helmet available. Not just that, NFL, college, high school, and even if you want to get those Madden relocation teams, if you collect NFL memorabilia, you want a logo on a helmet that not everyone's going to recognize. He did an amazing job on my Indianapolis Gladiators helmet. If you want to buy anything from him, you can use the code Ryan Moody Axis, my first name, my last name, A X I S, through the end of the month of October 2020, and you will get 20% off your order. Now, starting the Axis 2020 franchise, again, this game. As you're watching this, not actually available for release, but this is on my Xbox One. Harrison number 12, Bennett number 1, Carr number 13. Does it remind you of the Colts from a few years ago? A lot of teams have a little bit of a nod to a couple years ago in the NFL, but one thing that makes this game fun for me is every time you load it up, it's a different situation. So one of the first things I like to do is understand, you know, what my team's strengths are, go into this practice strategy and make some changes. I don't really feel like passing or special teams needs to be a priority when you think about who we would have on the roster as far as, you know, kind of a faux luck and a faux McAfee. So I like to focus on speed and agility, rushing and ball security, catching and route running, tackling, and then kind of fill in the rest as I go. Now, I mentioned a long time ago, I feel like obviously you have to have gameplay available in a game, but it may not always be the standard where you're going to want to play it. So replayability has to come in depth of these modes. And that's a big part of it. The other side is every time you load this up, you're getting a different budget to work within. You may have a team that doesn't have any of these things installed and you have to go do them yourself. But I'm also looking at a team that's expensive to run here. You do get a morale boost when you make these adjustments. So just before the season, I like to kind of go in when we're low 60 morale, okay, and go ahead and do something to kind of at least get the ball rolling, upgrade those buses. As far as free agents are concerned, again, changes every single time. Sometimes you get some diamonds in the rough, some A players that are young. In this case, you look at James Peterson, but you also have your funds available and the annual salary staring you right in the face. And there's going to be times where you realize maybe you don't want those long-term deals. Players don't sign with you. They sign with another team. You know, those are things that happen periodically. A lot of times you have free agents that go unsigned. But in this game, I found a lot of times if they don't like a contract. They're not going to sign. They're going to go somewhere else, especially if you load it up and you see there's other teams that are interested. One of the great things about this is it automatically sorts. So as you're going over, you want to look at awareness, tackling, whatever the case may be. It automatically sorts as you move. And then you're really just trying to walk this tightrope, at least for me, of young players, low salaries, and understanding that you're not going to get every player you offer a contract to. In this case, there's going to be players that are too much. Roman Man would literally be half the money we have left for the year. But trying to go through and sorting out players, to me, it's a challenge early on in trying to just get a team paid. But what you have to better understand is once you get going in the draft, you get players like Eric Oliver here that will be on much smaller contracts. And you kind of see those same things play out in the NFL where a player gets three, four, five years into his rookie deal and he wants more money. So it's really important that you enter this game with the mindset that financials really do matter because you can end a team if you don't have enough money to continue. So player salary is a big part of it. I don't even touch on it here, but coaching salary is a massive part of it as well. I would say probably 20% of your salary needs to go to your full coaching staff, which is, you know, 15 different positions. When you sign a player, they get put over to the practice squad. This also happens with your rookies. So in order to get them on the active roster, you're going to need to demote someone. Just like any other NFL simulation, pro football simulation, you're going to have salary cap issues and cutting players under contract. So it's trying to determine who is the best player to get out? Who is the oldest player? What player is going to offer the least? And in this case, you make that determination and then send them back to the practice squad. And then you kind of invert the process where you go over and take the player that you signed and pull them over. You can run a full 15 player squad. It's just a little difficult to do now, given the lack of funds that we have. So that's how you go out initially if you see a free agent. But I recommend every time you load up this game, go into free agency when you start a franchise and take a look because you'll be surprised with what is out there. So as I talked about 
we're going to go through and coach these games because the gameplay, at least for me, just isn't where I don't think it should be for me to sit here and do play nows every single week. But a lot of people asked about the customization. You're going to see a bit of an issue. I hope they can fix here. But you get custom uniforms as far as military appreciation. And then obviously you get each team has about six different variations. And then from that, you can go through and actually change them out as you wish. So as you know, I like to run blue pants on my Colts teams. There's a little bit of an issue where the numbers stay blue when it goes over to the blue jersey. Hopefully something they can resolve. But other than that, you can kind of piece together the uniforms as you see fit. They did used to have gloves and shoes available. They no longer are. So you're kind of stuck with the color matching in terms of what the colorways are for the uniforms. And you can obviously do that for both teams. There's also some alternate helmets there if you need to rewind a bit and see that the helmets change periodically depending on the uniform. So going forward in terms of continuing this out, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and do the coach mode, select the plays, show you kind of the broadcast mode that it offers, and obviously try to build a team that's going to be competitive year in and year out. I think the depth of the franchise mode is enough where that's going to be something not only that I can continue to play and enjoy for multiple seasons, but you guys will have enough variety in terms of what's happening to the organization that you'll be able to watch it as well, even if you're not familiar with the players or the teams. I feel like the coach mode is the best way to go right now, because in all fairness, as far as going through and playing every game, I don't know it's going to be something where I want to devote that much time, but I certainly will take going through and calling the plays, which obviously speeds the game up quite a bit. Having said that, I will also mention to you, if you get into situations where you want to play a game, a critical playoff game, obviously a championship game, it's nice to have the option to be able to play them. But I think right now, in terms of what I do on my channel, and honestly, to suit a lot of gamers, obviously I've shown the gameplay on my channel before. There's people that are fine with it. There's people that aren't fine with it. And I think it's personal preference. Uh, I can tolerate it to an extent, but again, it, it's not something really any football game right now brings to the marketplace where I'm unless you're talking about All Pro Football 2K8 or NFL 2K5, where I really sit down and can tell you I could play for hours on end and not just get, you know, overwhelmed by some of the things that happen. What you need, in my opinion, with these games has always been a true depth and variety in terms of the franchise mode. And right now, I feel like the independent games are absolutely checking that box, and I can't wait to go ahead and start a franchise with you guys and see exactly how we can lead this team, and more importantly, how we can build this team in the variety of ways that it can be done. So, with all that said, appreciate you guys checking out this video. Obviously, I will have a couple games up before this game releases. Technically, this is all kind of pre-release content from my Xbox One. I believe the game is scheduled still to come out on the 21st, but I promise you, for those of you that are waiting on my quote-unquote review or to see the game, over the next couple days, if you're on the fence, you're going to see enough of this franchise mode to make an educated decision as to whether or not it's a game you want to buy or not. And that's all because Danny is confident in their game enough to give it to me early and tell me I can share with you guys whatever I want. Appreciate you watching this video. I will be back in the week with more commentary.